get my food to eat. Hey, Terry. How are you, Bevan? Good, mate. Good. Hey, welcome to Food Toy. We've come down to Terry's farm. Victorian meat sheep down on the Ballerine Peninsula. He's going to tell us all about these fantastic sheep that he's running. So what are you running on down here, mate? We're running uh, two breeds of shedding sheep. Roger and Coles and Dawson. Right. We don't shear them. They shed their own fleece each year. Okay. And so all the goodness goes into the meat production. Oh, fantastic. This is what's really exciting from a chef's point of view, is that we, this is actually a stud farm, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, so we can actually see the process from the very beginning, and then we'll see the process as we go to when we're actually cooking it later on. Well, should we get going and have a look at your beautiful sheep? Yeah, all right. Let's yeah, go. Right. Sure. The Ballerine Peninsula is regarded as one of the best sheep breeding areas within Australia. The beautiful rolling hills and the soft sea breeze. I mean, it's hard to think that this area has just recovered from a 10 year drought, isn't it? I mean, what an amazing setting to breed top class sheep. We've been here about 30 years. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we've um, run a number of different breeds over the years. We, yeah. See, they're all heavily pregnant, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Another month we'll start dropping lambs. And um, we've been running alpacas with the sheep for <laughs> about 10 years now. Right. And we find that. Uh, they're very, very protective. They know each of the, the ewes and each of the lambs and which lamb belongs to which ewe. Right. Um, we haven't had any fox problems at all since we've had uh, alpacas. In How many do you have? Uh, alpacas. Yeah. We have two alpacas. Two alpacas, right. Yeah. It's a testament to the way these sheep are raised, really, as they look incredibly healthy and happy and are clearly in a wonderful natural environment. I mean, to see sheep grown in such a natural way makes for a beautiful end product. You see a woolly sheep and uh, you try and gauge how much meat is on it, yes. but you've got two or three inches or 50 mil, 60 mil of wool on it, yeah. and you've got to read that. The butchers then get caught when they slaughter the animal, yeah. hang it up, they haven't got the amount of meat on the carcass there. Yeah. Yeah. We got rid of all our wool sheep mm. and started uh, with uh, shedding sheep. Oh, okay. uh, and they were just coming into vogue then, that was in the 80s, and carpet was a big demand, there were a couple of carpet factories here in John, the woolen mills that were making the, the carpet and they were doing a roaring trade, so there was demand for that product then. Yeah, you know? that's right. The care of the sheep is vital, and as they're grazing animals, their pasture is a major influence in their final quality. Now the paddocks, between seasons, are cared for using worm casings and natural fertilisers. The sheep are then rotated each season to allow the paddock to replenish itself naturally, removing any foreign bodies. Once the, uh, if the grass is short, mm. uh, the sunlight, the ultraviolet light from the sun kills off all the, uh, any worms that are in the droppings, so you yeah, okay. let that kill off and then uh, spray it, harrow it or whatever you need to do there. So what's the primary sort of difference between a wilty pole and a dorper? The wilty pole is tall and leggy mm. uh, and the dorper is short and stocky probably a leaner animal in the, the wilty pole. Mm. Uh, black points on the feet and nose uh, okay. and so uh, stand up to the wetter country better whereas the dorper yeah. has been bred for uh, the veltz of South Africa out on the, the plain. Oh okay so they're more used to all the, sort and of the, the harsh and That's harsh right and they've done very well in outback New South Wales and Western Australia. Right. They tend to have a little bit more fleece on their back. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're it's green. almost it's almost like a carpet wall. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, very. Yeah. It's about 35, 40 microns. So okay. Rough, coarse stuff. No yeah. lanolin in it. Right. And okay. so, even though they've got a bit of wool on their back, uh, if it rains, normally woolly sheep would catch uh, flies that get strike yeah, there yeah. with. Uh, because they lay their eggs in the, the moist, humid mm -hmm. conditions. How long do you hold them for until you send them off to the other farmers? We we sell a lot at um, uh, six to twelve months of age right. as lambs, and yes. they're prepared to grow them out. Others want to breed straight away, and so they'll buy three, four-year-olds. Mm. I've been through abattoirs here in Australia, both cattle, meat, uh, cattle, sheep, and ostrich yeah, and yeah. Uh, deer as well and you see the handling is everything you know mm -hmm. if you you look after the animals and are uh, careful and kind of them you get the response and uh, then you, you get the better quality product at exactly the end, at the end exactly yeah, right yeah. and if they've been treated well then of that's course right, yeah, i yeah. suppose ethically it's better for them uh, for the animals yeah, as well yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah well 
certainly we're, we've got to be judged in that light. And, uh, yes, yes. And there's certainly a, a movement from a chef point of view, there's certainly a movement in the big restaurants that mm. people are now starting to care about that and yeah. care where the That's people right. are coming from. So while you, you just see a sheep in the paddock, there's an awful lot of things going on integrated in the background and integrated then through the whole transport system to take them to other farms or to abattoirs or yeah. through to the, the chef and the, so this, the customer. This is fantastic because this shows our, our very beginning, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. Our yeah. very beginning until yeah. when we're cooking it. That, that's right, yeah. And yeah. that's what's important. That's yeah. what I suppose what we're missing in yeah, society yeah. at the moment, isn't it? No.